I changed our camera starting position to be behind the arrow that we have rotated in the scene here and looking at this arrow as well. I noticed throughout the course of doing all these diffuse lighting videos, we've ditched this ambient light. Just to recap, ambient light is light that exists in a room. And ambient light is a result of some light source. For example, a light bulb shines and it bounces off this wall, bounces off that wall. Every time it bounces, it scatters more. The light scatters more and more and more and more and scatters and bounces and scatters and bounces. Much of that light is absorbed, but still some bounces and bounces. And the resulting light that is left over from all the bouncing is ambient light. And we haven't been using this ambient light variable at all. We've been focusing on the diffuse light. And so we've pushed our lighting calculations to the fragment shader since we've done this ambient light. So I'm actually going to highlight this. Control X and get rid of that. Bring it over here to the fragment shader. Drop the ambient light value as another uniform. This is our diffuse light. So I'll actually go as far as saying vec for diffuse light. It's the result of all the dot products. We've talked about that. And then I'm going to say duck color, which is our output color from this shader, this fragment shader, is the result of the diffuse light plus the ambient light. Ambient light is a VEC3, though. Diffuse light is a VEC4. So I'll put a 4 here on ambient light. That means over in my C++ code, I have to change all of my ambient light stuff to a 4 vector. This means opaque, no see-through with the light. In fact, we're actually not a using this component anyway. But I need to say VEC4. Get a using right here. Using GLM VEC4. Control minus, minus, get back to where we're at. And then I have to say 4, FV there. I think we're good to go. Going back to this code, however, we have our diffuse light plus our ambient light. And I want to tell you why I have a plus here. If I have a light and that light is hitting a surface, that gives me diffuse light. We've studied that forever and ever. If I have a light bulb and it hits a surface, which scatters that light, which hits a surface and scatters that light, which hits a surface and scatters the light and bounces and bounces and bounces around the room, that's going to give me ambient light. And the result of ambient light is much like the result of having a direct light hitting a surface, but that light is not nearly as strong as a direct light. But the result is the same. You, Regardless of whether the light comes from a direct light source or an indirect light source, we have more light. And so we simply just say add both of those. Give me the result of a direct light plus the result of all the light bouncing around the room. And that gives me, me my resulting total light. It's our diffuse plus our ambient. Control F5. Build this, run this. Let's see what the scene looks like with diffuse and ambient. It looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Here's our nice, bright diffuse. You can see the ambient. The ambient's actually pretty strong. The ambient's too strong. But now we see the side of this arrow, and that looks good. Let's let's lower the ambient light. I'll come down here. We should add some sliders just to play with this. But I'll do 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15. We'll go with half of the ambient light that we had before. You can see, yeah, that's probably a little bit better. I think the plane is pretty bright still, but the side of this arrow is looking better. But why is the plane so bright? compared to the arrow. I mean, out here, it's almost like we have diffuse light on the plane. It's still pretty bright, but the the arrow is looking good. Any any idea what's going on here? There is actually an issue with what we're doing. In fact, I'm going to go as far as messing with these values. Let's see if I can find a good ambient light value. Don't blink. I'm not sure if I'm happy with it still, but I took the ambient light down real low. Just 0.05. Build that, run that. You can see our plane has some ambient look to it. But the arrow is really dark. The arrow is really dark. Here's our strong diffuse. And you can muck around with those ambient values all you want to. But there's actually another issue I want to point out here. If I bump this ambient light up to something really bright, we'll do 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, an extremely bright ambient light. In fact, that's much too bright. But let's build that, run that, and look. You can see our arrow is nice and lit here. Nice and lit out on the plane, about 0.4 of 1 or 40% of what full light would be. And I actually want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me get the window snipping tool here. Hold on. I'm going to grab this area right about there and just save off that scene as we have it. Let me Alt-Tab between the original. You can see 
There's here's the original. Here's the snip. Very good. I'm gonna close our original. Let's go back to Visual Studio into our shader code, and I'm gonna remove all the diffuse light. So I'll come in here and say, let me just see the ambient light. Hit a five on that. Build that and run that. And voila, there's our ambient lit scene and I'm gonna bring up the snipped copy that I took just a second ago and I want you to notice what are the differences and try to figure out why those differences exist and see if you can figure out how we fix it there's actually a problem going on so here's our original here's the ambient original ambient original ambient do you see any problem as I bounce between the two let me see if I can help you out look in this area right here look at the back of the arrow Look at this. This goes darker because we don't have diffuse light anymore, which makes sense. But we don't have any diffuse light hitting this, nor do we have any diffuse light hitting this. So pay attention to right here as I alt tab. I'll I'll do it again. I'll go back and back and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Ambient by itself. Diffuse and ambient. Ambient by itself. Diffuse and ambient. What is the problem? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. This should not be getting darker. Okay, when I add light, as we did in our shader code, our previous shader code, we added light here. I said, take the ambient light that was here and add the diffuse. Well, if there's no diffuse light up here, then I should see the ambient color as we originally had it. This should be as bright as it was with ambient by itself. It should be this bright. This side of the arrow should be that bright. This side of the arrow, wherever that is, should remain that bright. Yet, when I bring in the diffuse light, it gets darker. That's not natural. That's not correct. Why is that? Pause the video. Think about it. See if you can figure it out. Okay, let me tell you what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this snippet. And let's let's uh, bring back our diffuse light. Diffuse. Oops. I'll just control Z that in. Diffuse plus ambient. Control F5. Remember, to get diffuse light, we do that dot product thing between the surface normal and the light vector. So in this case, the light would be right here, which means my light vector would be that direction. But my surface normal for this side of the arrow, the surface normal is pointing this direction. Well, if I do the dot product between these two vectors, this theta here is much greater than pi over 2. It's much greater than 90 degrees. And so you know what cosine does? Remember what cosine does when we pass the 90 degree mark? Cosine goes negative. Get it in your view so you can see that again. Remember this tool? Let's put it right there. And as the angle between our vectors gets closer and closer to 90, we get closer and closer to 0. You see how we're on the Y there, we're getting close, we're getting further down, we're to zero. And then once we're past 90, we go negative. We go negative for a long time. All right, well, when we're negative, that means we're subtracting light. By adding our diffuse light in here, we're subtracting from the ambient. We said, throw some ambient on here. Oh, subtract a ton from it. So we actually take away our ambient light. That doesn't make sense. I have a light bulb and if you're not facing the light bulb then I'm actually going to subtract what light is hitting your surface. That doesn't make sense. So you know what we have to do is say, hey, when the angle between the light vector, I'll say that's the light vector, when the angle between the light vector and the surface normal is greater than 90, if it's greater than 90 degrees, forget it. All right? Clamp that value to zero. Don't let it go anywhere in the negative range. Okay, clamp it to zero. Well, guess what uh, GLSL, our shading language has in there, it has a nice little function called clamp. Clamp the diffuse light between zero and one. And that'll go through every component of our diffuse light here and say, well, if it's less than zero, set it to zero. And if it's greater than one, set it to one. Clamp the values between zero and one. If it's 0.5, leave it alone. Don't do anything. But if it's less than zero, set it to zero. If it's greater than one, set it to one. So when I control F5 this, you see, yeah, we got our nice bright diffuse there. That's extremely bright there. That's saturated. It's too white there. But we have our nice bright diffuse there. And the back of our arrow is still lit with ambient light. We're not subtracting away any of our ambient light. So let's see if we can make this scene look a little bit better. I'm going to control Z, control Z this back to 0.05. Control F5, build this, run this. You can see, ah, we have just a, 
a hint of ambient light back here. It's not completely black as it was before, and then you have ambient light out here combined with the diffuse. So there you go. That's GLSL clamp. That's one reason why we'd use it. We don't want our diffuse light subtracting from our ambient light.